Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Welcome back to AWS reInvent 2017. I'm Lisa Martin, very well caffeinated today, so is David Floyer. We're really excited to be joined by two newcomers to theCUBE. We have Ryan Baxter, the Director of Cloud and Verticals from Micron, welcome. Thank you. And Mo Farhat, Director of SSD Business Line Management, a marketing guy. Uh, welcome guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Micron, a 35 year old business, you must have seen massive changes in the last 35 years, but tell us what you guys are doing with AWS. What's exciting you about the announcements coming out? How are you partnering with them? Well, you know, as, as you're seeing around you today, the rise of hyperscale is the true story um, in IT. And um, we're closely engaged with AWS to support their storage, memory, and emerging memory technologies as well. And we're tremendously excited by the potential that AWS is, uh, can bring to the market and is bringing to the market today. Right. You know, so, we uh, let's uh, unwrap that a little bit more. Um, one of the things that seems to be happening is that the traditional a nexus of networking, storage, going all the way through the, the central processor is breaking up. Right, right. And you've got some very interesting stuff with the, NV, the uh, NVM, NVDIMs. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that and what does it mean to yeah. architecture? Sure, so uh, I don't know what line isn't blurring these days uh, when it comes to computing. So uh, yeah, we, uh, we are uh, certainly developing and pushing a product today called NVDIM N. It is the first example of uh, persistent memory, which we believe will really usher in a, a completely new model of, uh, and a really a way of thinking about uh, the way folks do compute. And so, um, it really requires some change on the on the system side, but the advantages are significant. Uh, with just a little bit of uh, of investment in terms of um, you know adjustments in software and the way you use hardware, uh, what you can gain from a from a performance perspective is uh, is enormous. So uh, by having large amounts of DRAM and then on, on behind it a large amount of uh, NAND storage. Exactly. And that combination of the two together on, on the same right, right. little uh, piece that goes in the computer yeah, yeah, it's, uh, suddenly multiplies by how many? 10 times? Oh gosh, uh, at, least, times? at least an order of magnitude. Yeah. I mean, it, we're, we're pretty excited about where this can go. Obviously, it, uh, it doesn't come for free. There will be some investment as far as just um, you know, the application stack and how, how things need to change from a hardware enablement perspective. But, uh, but yeah, they, the things are very, uh, changing very quickly. Um, the traditional model of, of really memory and, and storage is, is very much uh, at risk and, and very much uh, blurring these days. And uh, we're excited about where it's going. Yeah. So let's talk about the, uh, the, the SSDs. I've, I've been following the flash market for a long time and, and saying what a difference it makes to, to applications in the amount of data that they can get into them, both from the memory side and, and the storage side. So uh, what's happening on the, uh, on the SSD side? What's new and what's, what, are, what are you focusing on? Well, what's most exciting about the developments in SSDs today isn't that just that they're accelerating existing workloads, but they're enabling all new workloads. Things like uh, real-time analytics to drive our AI engines uh, have revolutionary potential for our daily lives and not just in the data center. And so when we take a look at what's happening in the SSD market today, the, main, the big story is uh, the ramp in adoption in PCIe connected or NVMe SSD. And we believe that we're at a turning point um, right now. And uh, you know, led by AWS and other hyperscalers in truly driving uh, this adoption. And what NVMe allows you to do is uh, really harness the inherent parallelism of the mem solid uh, memory technology, solid state memory technology, and enable better uh, control, enable lower latency, higher throughput, and really um, uh, move away from the legacy I.O. stack uh, that's, uh, that was built in for the hard drive era. Um, or as we like to call it at Micron, spinning rust. Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, and that's really amazing, isn't it? If you can have real-time analytics connecting to systems of, of record, 
at the same time, that ushers in a completely, what we call in Wikibon, systems of intelligence. Right. A completely new way of being able to provide much, much more data to those systems and drive productivity yeah. By an order, again, really very high levels of difference of the type of applications that right, you can right, have. Right, right, so right. let me ask you, um, this is a lot of change as we've talked about. We're, we're taking out uh, the, the network side, we're taking out the, the storage side and, and the memory side. What's, what's one of the most important things about getting this to happen over the next few years? Right. Well, I think uh, I'll start. I guess uh, one of the most important things in, in our minds is, is um, you know paying attention to, to the customers and really uh, what drives them, what what provides the most value uh, for for their deployments in in the cloud. And so, um, you know, we we have the privilege of of working with folks like AWS uh, because these customers, uh, at the end of the day, challenge us to be better. They challenge us to uh, to maintain or improve our quality levels. They challenge us to be you know, more flexible from a go-to-market and business model perspective. And, you know, frankly, uh, a lot of the features that uh, they're looking at incorporating into otherwise standard products today actually end up finding their way into the next generation products that we design tomorrow. So it informs a lot of, uh, a lot of the way we need to think about, um, you know, traditional memory and storage models in the future. What about the standards that are required? The, the standards? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we certainly, uh, the standards bodies are, are, are alive and well and are, are absolutely necessary for, for what we need to do uh, to, to push uh, our products into the market on a daily basis. Oftentimes those standards are too rigid or uh, not you know, feature laden enough to be able to, to get uh, enough uh, benefit for the, for the particular end customer. And so in, that, in those cases, we're sort of having to bend the model a little bit. So, uh, our products are, are based on you know, a, a relatively uh, you know, straightforward set of uh, foundational standards, but from there, uh, we listen to the customer to, to, en to enable new features, new, uh, you know, new capability of our otherwise uh, standard product. Uh, absolutely, and, and in fact, Micron today is really working with our customers up front uh, in helping drive the standards with deep technical engagement on next generation NVMe features, as well as uh, next generation form factors. You know, really our uh, technology leadership in you know, DRAM, NAND, everything in between, really positions Micron um, very strongly to shape the future here, and, and you know, we can't do it um, without strong customer engagements, yeah, right. and um, we're really very excited about, uh, about what the potential uh, for our future here. Yeah, fantastic. How does the standards um, focus that you guys have, how does that set Micron apart from your competition? Well, it helps us uh, be a uh, good player in the industry. Um, it helps cement a leadership. Um, it, it allows us to um, um, have a playing field that goes to the benefit of our customers, our partners, in delivering predictability to the market, delivering overall lower costs to the market, and um, all the other ancillary benefits that agreement on standards provide. I love what you talked about with respect to you know, working together in partnership with your customers. We hear a lot about that from AWS. They're very customer centric and that, and I love their, um, there was an article on siliconangle.com this morning, it was the third uh, installation of John Furrier's exclusive with Andy Jassy. And I love their kind of um, backwards approach to yeah. product development, which is uh, really, you surprisingly still revolutionary. So the customer is such a driving force into what Amazon has become, and it sounds like what you're both saying, that's really very much paralleled at Micron. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You yeah. know, leading is hard <laughs> when you're, you're firmly looking forward um, and really blazing new trails in technology, in our product set here, and, and really driving the revolution um, towards the solid state data center. Hmm. Um, you can't do it uh, looking in the rear view mirror. Uh, you've got to go in collaboration, and uh, it's really uh, some of the most exciting um, things that we do here is uh, really enabling our customers to succeed. Absolutely. So, and, and uh, 
your focus at the moment, I, I, I'm putting words in your mouth, I presume that's really with the cloud providers, the hyperscale people yeah. like AWS, like, um, uh, like uh, Microsoft, right. like Google, are those your sort of where you're starting the conversations and then that'll come down into the uh, enterprise as well after that, is that the yeah. model? So, uh, you know, we, we um, provide solutions to a broad, a broad range okay. of customers. Yeah. There is no doubt that hyperscale is in the driver's seat in terms of uh, demand uh, now and in the future uh, for IT technology of all, all stripes there. So we're yeah. very focused yeah. on that. Yeah, right. and there are, there are cloud models that uh, obviously are heavily supported by uh, our OEM customers as well. So, uh, maintaining engagement and, and really being best in class uh, in their eyes is, is also uh, extremely important for us. So this event, 40, I, I actually heard this morning 44,000 44, people here wow. yeah. across the entire strip. Right. Last year it was around 30,000 or so. How does this massive momentum that AWS has, how does that inspire Micron? And, and what can people um, see, feel, touch, and experience at your booth here in the expo? Right. Well, it really, um, uh, uh, again, uh, you know, the, 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 the growth in the number of attendees is nothing compared to the growth <laughs> in AWS's business overall. Uh, so, you know, these numbers are truly inspiring. Um, they're changing the landscape of, uh, of IT today. And so, uh, you know, encourage everybody to come yeah. by our, uh, yeah. our booth and look yeah. at the variety of solutions that we have, um, both on the SSD side, memory side, as, yeah. as well as uh, the all popular NVDIMs. And I, I think what, uh, what events like this help to do is, is uh, you know, is mobilize 44,000 of the brightest people in the world that come from all different walks of life, not just uh, from a technical perspective, but, you know, software, hardware, um, application-oriented um, marketing uh, to, to really, you know, have a meeting of the minds, if you will, uh, and, and it really does. It, it challenges the, the, the traditional way of thinking of how we, how we design our solutions and, and how we support customers like AWS. Well guys, thank you so much for stopping by and chatting with David and me. Thank you very much. Really exciting to hear what you guys are doing and we wish you continued success. Thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, thank you, time. David, thank appreciate you. it. Thank Good you so much. Good to have you here. For Mo and Ryan and my co-host David Fleur, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live on day two at AWS 2017 reInvent. Stick around, we'll be right back.